So today I'm going to be taking a look at a watch from DIY Watch Club. This was a watch that was sent to me for free. I don't have to pay for the watch, I don't have to send it back, and I also don't have to share my review before I publish it. So these are all my thoughts, all my opinions, and let's just dive into what is, I think, a pretty cool watch. So we have a diameter of 38, lug to lug of 45, height of about 12.7, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. So some other general specifications for the watch, we're gonna have the Seiko NH72 movement beating way in here, as you can see through the case back. You do have a mineral glass on the case back, and then a sapphire glass on the front. Technically, you can have it with mineral glass on the front as well, but I optioned the extra $20 uh, sapphire crystal. The watch has a hundred meters of water resistance with a regular push-pull crown and the womb is BGW9 for the hands and the indices. Last but not least, this watch retails from DIY Watch Club for $420 for the regular pricing, but they seem to always have a sale ongoing that's at least 20% off. So this one currently uh, in this configuration with a sapphire crystal is 360 or 340 with mineral. So starting off with the dial here, we can see we do have this very nice sapphire dial disc that is completely transparent, but it does have a little bit of a gray tone to it. So although it is fully transparent, you do get this very nice uh, quality where at some angles, it's almost like a grayish black dial that you can somewhat see the uh, gears through. Looking a little bit more generally here, we do have a nice arrow style handset here with a very nice defined arrow for the hour hand that is bifaceted as well. Uh, the hour hand is also bifaceted. Then we have a very traditional almost dive style layout here with circular pips, uh, more rectangular double pips at the three, six, and nine, and then a triangle here at 12. I do think it's a very nice looking dial because the uh, hour markers are actually metal surrounded and then filled, so you do have a little bit of depth to them. And then on top of that, you do just have a kind of pure-ish white tone coming from that BGW9 loom that doesn't contrast at all with the monochromatic theme. The text is kept fairly minimal and at least fairly balanced here as well. You do have the D uh, for DIY Watch Club logo at 12 o'clock. Then you have the DWC D02, which is the model designation for this watch right under that. And at the very bottom, automatic and water resistant. Nothing there that you really don't need. Maybe you could have kept the model name off and just the D there. But as it stands, the text is done well. It's done in a very nice tone. It's been done very crisply. And I don't think it looks too bad as executed. You'll be able to see a little bit more once we zoom in, but with the sapphire dial, you can of course see to the more uh, main base plate of the movement here. And it has been skeletonized away. Of course, the Seiko movement isn't anything crazy cool uh, sculpturally to look at, but as it stands, it is a very nice effect the way they've done it here. I think had it been a very plain, complete sapphire glass that's very much clear, and you can see right through to the base movement, it would have looked a little bit boring, a little bit almost cheap, but the way they've done it with this grayish uh, tone to it, it makes it feel a little bit more modern, and it almost uh, kind of hides away the simplicity of the movement lying underneath. And even though it's simple, it is nicely uh, skeletonized and does look interesting. Taking a look at the watch in kind of shaded light, you can see depending on the angle, it can go from a very much reflective, uh, kind of almost sapphire mess to something that is very visible. And it is something where you can definitely see through the sapphire middle dial, um, depending on the angle, but sometimes it looks almost like a blackish dial with a little bit of a hint of something going on. So it has a little bit of mystique to it. But when you put it in direct sunlight, you see through it immediately. Those kind of lighter tones of the base plate metal movement come out a lot more. And it is just a very interesting dial to look at. When you have the shade and the sun on it, you kind of have both natures and the best of both of them. You don't have as many reflections because it's not purely in the shade, but you do get to see that see-through dial. You do get to see some of that black, almost non-see-through dialness coming out. And it is just a very dynamic dial, especially depending on you know what lighting situation you're in and what angle you're holding it at. So one of the DIY Watch Club's whole thing is, of course, they send you the watch deconstructed and you put it together. So a lot of the QC issues you'll see with the watch are uh, caused by myself. So as we can see with the D here, it is a little bit smudged. There are some maybe some scratches on it. So basically, I just didn't go over it enough times with the little uh, Rodico watch putty that they include. I could, of course, open up the watch and kind of correct that a little bit. But one, it is funnier this way. And two, uh, it's kind of just a mark of the fact that I put the watch together, whether or not it was shoddily done. I will say most of these components did look rather nice when they came out of the box. I can see here the back end of the seconds hand is pretty clean, and that's how most of the components looked before I kind of uh, went and destroyed them as I tried to put them on in a way. So you can get a fairly clean looking watch as long as you take a lot of time uh, putting it together and doing it carefully and doing it properly. Uh, but as it stands, of course, you can see here, there are definitely a lot of remnants left behind of the watchmaker's faults. 
As it stands, the hands are done fairly nicely. Again, they are a little bit rough around the edges, but they do have a nice shape to them. They are bifaceted. They do catch the light very nicely. And the lumen fill is done very uh, cleanly and just kind of in one uniform layer. There aren't any weird splotches missing or weird mismatched areas. It is just a very nice application. You can see the text here is done very cleanly in a nice three-dimensional print in this very nice pure white. Of course, the tone does mismatch a little bit from the loom in wrist view and in natural sunlight, that difference kind of just goes away. At this magnification, and I would say uh, in person as well, you can see pretty nicely into this little movement architecture here. You can see some parts of it aren't the most beautifully finished and that's kind of how it just came from the factory itself. But as it stands, it does have a cool finish on it, very modern looking. There is a nice amount of skeletonization, even though there aren't a lot of gears and cogs going on underneath. They did give it a very nice look. And of course, you do at least still have some of the jewels on display very nicely, adding a little bit of color to the dial as well. At this little cutout here, we can see the pallet fork beating away and the balance wheel turning as well. It is a little bit hard to see kind of on wrist view because it is like cut out in this very almost form-fitting way to where it almost uh, blocks the look at the wheel spinning. So even though you can't see that perfectly turning, you can see the pallet fork beating away nicely if you kind of focus on it as you're wearing it. What is nice is for all the applied loom, it is done very finely, very cleanly, and a really nice application. Overall, the markers have a little bit of scratches here and there, but part of them would have been caused by me. Part of the dust is definitely caused by me. And these screws actually serve to put the sapphire dial onto the movement itself, so they are actually functional. I do like how they put the seconds in the chapter ring. It definitely declutters the dial, gives it just a nice little extra added dimensionality to the watch. And honestly, it makes you focus more on that very cool sapphire effect. So although this base movement here isn't the most perfectly finished, it is done in a very utilitarian way. It does look fairly nice, especially through the sapphire glass. And the sapphire glass in itself is just a really cool feature you don't see a lot from watches, especially of this price point. So I think all things considered, it is a very good looking watch, a very good looking dial. So looking at the case shape here, it is very reminiscent of an oyster style case. It is very simple, it is very monoblock in its construction. It does have a little bit of curvature to it. And it is kind of a little bit no frills, a fairly large bezel, uh, fairly blocky lugs, a fairly blocky mid case, and then a case back and bezel. Looking a little bit more generally, we do have horizontal brushing on the case here with drilled lugs, which is nice to see, and the brushing is actually done very well. We of course have a signed crown with the DIY Watch Club logo there. We do have vertical brushing on the lug tops, a nice little chamfer along the side of the case, and a fully high polished bezel. The bezel itself has a nice slope to it that is more interesting than a flat bezel, and it leads nicely onto the flat uh, topped crystal here. It is executed very well, it looks very premium, and overall I think the finishing on the watch for the price point is very, very nice and almost a little bit unexpected. There aren't any major manufacturing defects I can see. The case back is done very well. And even the way the rotor is finished with the striping I think is very well done. You can also opt to have a custom rotor done. You can have it done in a PVD finish or whatever kind of finish this is, gunmetal style, to match the movement. But unfortunately, they were out of that at the time. So you can see I customized with a little bit of X right here, but I opted to not put it on the movement because, well, I think this looked a little bit cleaner and a little bit more uh, homogenous with the rest of the design. The case back is also pretty nicely done. It's brushed where they didn't really have to brush it and the writing is done fairly deep so it stands out pretty nicely against the brushing. Overall, it is a very nice case and it is fairly well wearing not only because of the short lug to lug, but the curvature to the case back, the fact that the case back wears a little bit into the wrist. They borrowed from a very tried and true styling that uh, does also still look very nice here. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing my Christopher Ward here, and this is a 41 and a half millimeter. And here we have the 38 millimeter DIY watch club on my six and a half inch wrist, and it fits very, very nicely. Of course, you have that classic oyster style case. So although it is a 38 millimeter, it's not a small wearing 38. It feels very nice on wrist. It has a good amount of presence. It doesn't sit up too tall on the wrist at all. There isn't really any daylight shining through on the wrist and it does just conform and wear very nicely. I think you can tell as you're wearing the watch, the dial just has a lot of fun to it. You can see that the sapphire kind of gets more dramatic depending on the angle you're holding it at. You can see the movement a little bit more at certain angles where at other angles it feels just a little bit more like a mystery type dial where there's a little bit going on but you can't see it all. And then you have the indices and the hands just popping very nicely off against the dial, uh, leading to a very monochromatic but a very 
interesting and stark and very readable dial. Looking at it from the side view, again, it doesn't really rise up off the wrist at all. It sits very comfortably in, uh, and it is just a very nice wearing experience. Of course, it isn't the most, uh, I guess you can say, rounded case bottom, but it doesn't really dig into the wrist at all, and it is comfortable to wear. So before I put on the original strap, this is a little bit more of a toned down rubber strap from Benetto Citarini. It's nice because you have these holes on the underside of the strap, which actually aren't punctured on the top side. So it leaves a little bit more of a sleek look to the watch. Of course, I kind of cut it to fit my wrist a little bit better. So that looks a little bit unfinished. But as it stands, it is very nice, very sleek, and there really is no patterning to it, so it is just a very nice uh, addition to the watch. Here we have it on the original FKM rubber strap provided. It has a signed buckle here, very nicely done, very comfortable strap. I just don't personally like this little ridge in the middle of the strap. I don't think it looks very clean or very elegant. Uh, of course, it's going more for a sports watch look, and that's okay, but I just don't prefer it, especially not uh, compared to this little bit more of a smooth strap from Benetto. That being said, it is very comfortable, it is very pliable, and aesthetically it does look, uh, at least color tone and stylistically, very nice on the watch. So it isn't a bad decision to go with, it just is not my most preferred, and as a out-of-the-box watch strap, it actually is very nice and better than a lot of the straps you get with most companies. And it is nice too that it comes with quick release spring bars even though you do have the drilled lug holes. Next we have this interesting distressed uh, leather strap from Veblenist. I think the gray tones just work very well with this more gray monochromatic dial. It just adds a little bit of a distressing and interest to the watch that it didn't have otherwise. Very cool look in my opinion. Doesn't really dress it up much but it gives it a nice distressed casual look to the watch. And that is pretty much what the watch is going for in its base state so I think it complements pretty well. Next we have this very interesting textured green rubber strap from Weiss Watch Co. Um, I believe they're a watch company or they sell watches and straps, so uh, Weiss Watch Co it is. And I think this just pairs very nicely with the watch, not only because the rubber strap obviously just leans a little bit sporty, but the color tones work really well. The texture adds a nice little element to the watch, but it's not overbearing. It is just very cool. The green tone works really nice on the watch. If I move the watch up a little bit, I have closer to a six inch wrist here, and you can see the watch still wears very nicely. And one thing I will note too about the wearing experience is the bezel is fully high polished, so as you kind of wear it throughout the day, you do get a lot of fingerprints on it. And I kind of maybe would have preferred a fully brushed bezel to give it a little bit of a sportier look, but I can understand with this dial, maybe it can feel dressy, it can feel a little bit cool and interesting, and the polish doesn't look bad as it is. Next we have this nice distressed Italian leather strap from Vario. Looks pretty good on the watch, the brown tone works pretty well, and yeah, let's get on wrist. Looks good, nice dress down combo on this, and really have no complaints. I think this is a strap you definitely should get if you get the watch. And lastly, the classic Archer silicone strap. It does look pretty perfect on the watch. It matches the monochromatic look, matches the sporty feel because of the silicone, and really have no complaints. It's pretty great in my opinion, matches very nicely with the uh, loom on the dial of the watch, plants the watch very nicely, and is just a very comfortable combo. So really no reason to not get the strap if you get this watch. So taking a look at the loom here, you can see it's done fairly well. We have that classic BGW9 Glow. It isn't the strongest application, and you can't perfectly tell through the camera, but the hands and the indices aren't perfectly uh, kind of color tone matched. The circular pips and the triangle are the brightest, whereas everything else is a little bit dimmer. So it's not a bad application, it just isn't perfect, but I think for the price point, can't really ask for much more. Relooming and comparing to the Timex here, you can see the color tones are very similar, similar brightness as well. Of course, the DIY Watch Club will die off a little bit sooner, but again, as it stands, not a super bad application, but it could be a little bit better. So starting off with the pros and cons, and I think a big pro for the watch is the fact that it's 39 millimeters. It does fit well, it's a really nice size, and although you are starting to see these more sub 40 millimeter size in the micro brand space, it is nice that this brand is continuing that trend and just offering you a, what I think is a pretty good package at that size. I think the style of it in general is also just very versatile. Of course, if you look at some different models, it probably is a little less true, but with this model I looked at, it can be a little bit sporty, it can be a little bit dressy, and its finishing doesn't make it lean one way or the other. I think arguably the biggest pro of this watch is gonna be the sapphire dial. This, I think, is executed perfectly. It looks very premium. Before this watch in particular, I hadn't really noticed sapphire dials and watches before Christopher Ward. Or at the very least, that's the one brand I know that uses it the most. And typically, those retail around $1,000 with their sapphire dials, and this you're getting at two, three hundred, maybe four hundred dollars for some of the other variations. And for that price point, I think you're getting a lot of value for your money. The sapphire dial itself is, again, just well executed. It looks premium. And it is something that's just gonna stand out from the rest of the watches in your box. 
My last pro for the watch is I think it is just really good value that they're offering. You're getting a sapphire dialed watch for $340 and they even offer a GMT version that doesn't have a sapphire dial for about $260. So what you're looking at, the finishing, uh, the fact that it is put together or at least when it is put together it is a pretty nice package. For that price point it is actually fairly hard to beat. I can't think of many brands off the top of my head that really compete at that exact pound for pound price point. Like you're paying the same amount of price for this as you would like a Dan Henry. And it's rare that those are automatic. And when they are automatic, there is more of a one-to-one -to -one comparison. But even as it stands, I think some of the designs on the DIY Watch Club can be a little bit more interesting like the Sapphire Dial version. I think the whole putting the watch together experience makes you appreciate the watch more, makes you appreciate watch making more. And it's not like you're putting together the movement from start to finish and <laughs> dealing with the trouble of it not even working. Uh, you're doing a lot of the more menial putting things together and part of watchmaking, but it is still not easy. It makes you take a second and step outside yourself and go, wow, this is a, a lot of work that they're doing and at this price point, these things still need to be done. So moving on to cons, and I think one of the bigger cons would be the fact that it, it's likely that you will probably mess up at some point during the installation process. Uh, you can have it where the chapter ring isn't aligned or you maybe crack something or you mess up a screw, you scratch hands, the hands are just not the quality that you want them like mine were when you saw the macro. Uh, there's a lot of things that can kind of slightly go wrong but at the end of the day you still get a working watch. And uh, although it sounds a little bit like oh, it's not a bug, it's a feature, but it's one of those things where yes you put it together, yes you messed it up, but now it's yours. And then one thing to note, and I would include it as a con, is that the watch came with two sets of hands, but one of the hands that mine came with were immediately just like bent. And to be fair, you can bend it back into shape, you can kind of make it look better than it came, but it is annoying that kind of one set of hands was already out of commission before I could even decide which one looked better. So this is something to keep in mind. Thankfully, the both hands weren't messed up and I was able to use one of them, but uh, there is maybe a potential that you get yours delivered and they're all kind of a little kaputs that I'm sure you could reach out to the company at that point and offer them. They'd probably offer you a replacement. And my only last very small thing is I think that the loom could be better. They do use BGW9, which is a very nice loom application. It just isn't thick enough. Uh, they could use more layers. Again, this is a fairly affordable watch, so I don't knock it too much, but it would be nice to see. So final thoughts on this watch, and I actually really like it, and I actually like it a lot more than I thought I would. At the end of the day, this is an affordable watch, but it's also a watchmaking experience that you're kind of paying for. When I kind of set out to do this watchmaking experience, I was like, oh, okay, you know, they set off, they say on the website, set around two hours. And I did that, I, you know, I had my day off, I was getting ready to build the watch, and I think it took me four, you know? So it's just one of those things where, uh, go at your own pace and see that watchmaking isn't a walk in the park. This watch will maybe give you some trouble or if you want to be a perfectionist it might take even longer. But it is just a fun experience. You're now interacting with a watch purchase and just a watch in general like you maybe never have before. The fact that you get a watchmaking kit, you also get uh, pretty decently finished components in themselves and a whole tutorial laid out for you on how to put it together is very fair value for what they're charging you. If they charged you a couple hundred dollars more, I honestly wouldn't even be mad at it because it is, again, a watch and an experience you're paying for. And it is kind of good in both respects. At the end of the day, this watch took me by surprise. I didn't expect to like it as much. I didn't expect to wear it as much. And I do actually see myself coming back to it and wanting to wear the watch because Specifically with this model, the Sapphire Dial really draws me in. It's something that's unique, it's something they actually executed very well, and again, it's something that I don't have in my watch box already. And the 39mm size is just a cherry on top. Taking a browse to the website, I also thought they had some other options that looked very interesting. The GMTs I even considered getting, but I have too many watches as it is. So I do think if you're interested in this product, you'll find something that fits your needs, fits your collection, something you'll find interesting. If you've ever thought about using DIY Watch Club, I would say just give it a chance. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I mean, I definitely wasn't, so give it a try. Uh, anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thank you as always for watching the video. If you have any questions, let me know, and uh, I'll see you in another one.